Have you ever wished to be in two places at the same time? I sure have, and I'm wishing it right now. I could be both here giving this talk and be back in my lab running an experiment at the same time. Think of someone close to you. No matter how far they are, you have this special bond that doesn't fade away. If something were to happen to them, you would feel it immediately, even if they were on the other side of the universe. Now you're faced with a mountain. The only way is to climb over the mountain, right? But what if I told you you could just appear on the other side? Now these ideas, they sound absurd. At least in our everyday life, they do. In our world, the world we live in, physics behaves in a tangible and predictable way. However, at the smallest scale, things follow different sets of rules. Here, a particle can be at multiple places at the same time, a phenomenon known as superposition. Two particles can form a strong bond across the universe. This is called entanglement. And a particle can appear on the other side of the barrier by just tunneling through. These are the fundamental principles of quantum mechanics, a framework that govern the rules of a smallest scale. Quantum mechanics isn't just a theoretical concept. In fact, it has made prediction that match experimental observation to a remarkable degree of accuracy at a level unmasked by any other field of physics. In my lab, we routinely observe these effects. However, despite its experimental success, quantum physics is notoriously famous for being counterintuitive. And this is because we try to use classical concepts to describe the physics. This fundamentally presents difficulties in understanding the field. The best way I have found is to approach this quantum mechanics like you would approach any new game. Every game has a set of unique rules, a rule that may seem arbitrary. However, within the framework of the game, it is logical and consistent. Once you have accepted the rule and understood the rule, you can play the game. So what does it mean to play the quantum game? It means using these underlying principles to build groundbreaking technologies just like what we have done with classical physics. With electromagnetism, we created electricity and modern communication systems. With thermodynamics, we created steam engines that powered massive trains. General relativity paved the way to global positioning system, and fluid dynamics enabled space technology. Following similar approach, we ask ourselves, can we build technology that harness the principle of quantum mechanics? And the answer is yes, but don't just take my word for it. One of the greatest mind and Nobel laureate, Richard Feynman, famously said, nature isn't classical, damn it, and if you want to make a simulation of nature, you'd better make it quantum mechanical. These words remind us that quantum physics is not just a new description of reality. It is a powerful that has the potential to transform technology as we know it. So what are the technologies that quantum can revolutionize? Communication, computing, and sensing, all key technologies that are so well integrated in our lives that we cannot imagine a day without it. So how do we bring quantum to revolutionize these technologies? Simple, right? Just add the quantum label. Or this is what you would observe in the market right now. Just a qu quick Google search would land you on a quantum dishwashing tablet, a quantum cooler, and a quantum watch. We have to be careful with using these labels as buzzwords, as they might create negative impact on the advancement of the actual technology. Let's get back to the real technology. Quantum communication, quantum computing, and quantum sensing collectively define quantum technology. By harnessing quantum mechanical phenomena, these technologies have potential to 
provide significant advantage over their classical counterparts. Quantum communication will offer the most secure way to send data, which is virtually going to be impossible to hack. Quantum computing can solve problems in a matter of seconds or minutes that would take a classical computer years or even de decades. And quantum sen sensing will offer a fundamentally new approach to detect and measure signals at a remarkable precision. Quantum computing in particular has attracted global attention since the 1980s, when Richard, Richard Feynman first proposed the idea of simulating physics with quantum system. Since then, billions of dollars have been poured in academia and industries to build large-scale general-purpose quantum computer. This is also the focus of my research, so it's an exciting opportunity for me to share with you insights on what makes quantum computer unique, why is it needed, and how can we make it into a reality? Classical computers are already serving us very well. So why do we need quantum computer? In some fields like drug discovery, cryptography, and complex optimization, our computational needs are growing much faster than what a classical computer can handle. Also, classical computer has sort of reached its fundamental limit. In 1965, Gordon Moore, the co-founder of Intel, predicted that the number of transistors would double every two years. And this prediction held for decades, with transi transistors becoming ever smaller and uniquely packed, densely packed in a microprocessor in tens and billions of transistors per microprocessor today. As the size of the uh, transistor shrinks down to the subatomic level, quantum effects starts to kick in. An electron on a single transistor can tunnel to the neighboring ones, making computational unreliable. This is the same tunneling effect that we discussed earlier, however, working against the classical hardware. This calls for a fundamentally new approach to computing, and that's where quantum computers come in. Quantum computers won't outperform classical computers on all tasks, Problems like simulation of atoms and molecules that are required for drug discovery or materials research. Searching and optimizing a vast solution is space for logistics, finance, and AI. Building secure way to, uh, for computing. These are the problems quantum computer has the potential to really take advantage over classical computers. To really understand this, let's take a look at a toy example. Imagine you have to find one right path out of these four possible paths. With a classical approach, you would need to, you need to explore one path at a time. And in the worst case, you would need to explore all four paths before you get to the right answer. However, with quantum computers, by utilizing the principle of superposition and entanglement, you can explore all four paths simultaneously. However, you would need to carefully design algorithms that would cancel the probability of the wrong path and amplify the probability of the right path, efficiently giving you the right answer. And this advantage comes from the fundamentally different way how a quantum bit is encoding, encoding information on a quantum computer com uh, compared to a classical bit. In a classical bit, you can either have a zero or a one. On quantum bit, on top of being 0 and 1, it can be both at the same time, thanks to superposition. This is what gives the quantum computer an advantage over classical computer. To really visualize this, let's compare the number of operations a classical computer can do versus what a quantum computer can do for a given number of bits or qubits. With just about 266 qubits, you can explore paths that exceeds number of atoms in the known universe with quantum computer. In contrast, with classical computer, you'd only be able to explore 266 paths. This is the e extraordinary capability of quantum computer. This is not the full story. You would also need to be able to design algorithms that can exploit these properties to get you the right answer. Together with quantum algorithm and hardware, quantum computing is set to 
revolutionize the computing technology. How do we build a quantum computer? Unlike classical computer, there is no single transistor uh, standard uh, to make a bit. Quantum computer right now has different ways you can build a, a qubit. On one hand, you have naturally occurring molecules, atoms, or ions that can be made as a qubit. And on the other hand, you have engineered system, like a photonics qubit, where you can use a photonic integrated circuit to use a particle of light to encode the uh, information on a bit, on a qubit. By trapping an electron in a semiconductor material, you can use the state of electron to work as a qubit. And by making electrical circuits on a superconducting material, you can make a superconducting qubit. Superconducting qubit, in particular, has gained wide spread uh, adoption in both research and industry due to its scalability. At Alto University, decades of research in this, in this domain allowed us to pursue this with great interest. At Alto University, people have built massive system to study met behavior of metal at a very low temperature. At these temperatures, electron forms pairs and move without any resistance. The technology developed here has made several records in reaching temperature down to 100 trillionth of a degree, just above absolute zero. Absolute zero is the temperature that nature will never allow you to reach. In the parallel, researchers and scientists for decades have investigated superconducting magnetometer, a device that detects brain waves for neuroimaging. Leveraging these techniques, techniques researchers like me are investigating the building blocks of a quantum computer. This is a four qubit device that I have made in our clean room. If you zoom in on one of the qubit, you will see this mat, uh, metal pattern. The cross there is the qubit. And if you zoom in on the cross, you will see another cross. That's the same squid superconducting magnetometer that were used by researchers to study brain waves. Different parameter regime, but fundamentally the same. Together, they form artificial atom. Why artificial atom? If you look at the energy structure of a hydrogen atom, you will see a discrete step. It's not continuum. This is the signature of quantum physics. And this is the same signature you see for this artificial atom called Transman qubit. So what we have done here is very remarkable. Not only quantum physics is applicable to nature in a natural smaller system, but you can engineer a system that will behave with the principle of quantum mechanics. And not only that, you can use it to build technologies. Having this device itself is not enough to explore the quantum mechanical properties. You have to cool it down to a really, really low temperature. You probably have seen this image in media. This is a dilution refrigerator. This is what brings down the temperature to 10 millikelvin. To put this into perspective, the coldest place on Earth, Antarctica, would feel 18,000 times hotter than 10 millikelvin. And the outer universe, 217 times. And when you cool down your qubit, then you explore this quantum effect. The graph here shows you the state of the qubit from 0 and 1. And the most interesting point is this, the superposition of the qubit. This is the point where a qubit can either 0 and 1 at the same time. Now, this is just a single qubit, Near, not e enough to build or solve practical problems. To do that, you need millions of qubits. And that may take decades or even longer. Now, the decade timeline probably would turn a lot of people away. But any century-defining technology will take time. 
If it didn't, then it would not be a century defining technology. At Alta University, we are setting up our first quantum computer to prepare the next generation of a future shaped with quantum technology. Using this quantum computer, researchers and students can teach quantum mechanics, enabling students to run experiments that for a very long time were only accessible to a doctoral student or a senior researcher. In a way, we are not just building a technology. We're building an entirely new mindset for the next generation. So when you ask a young student, why quantum, you'll get an answer along the lines of nature isn't classical silly. Thank you.